What's up, what's up, real MVPs? Welcome into another episode of Dave's Board, Dave's Big Board. I, I, by the last one, we're going to solidify whether it's Dave's Big Board or Dave's Board uh, by the end of this. But these are the Dave's videos. Dave's many boards of bigness. <laughs> Dave's many boards of bigness. Boards of assorted bigness. Of assorted bigness. Because each one is different, so therefore, yeah. <laughs> True. This one a lot bigger than some of the others as... This video, we're talking about combo guards. We're taking a look at prospects in the 2023 NBA draft. Dave's given his rankings. We talk about some of them. Remember, I'm going to say this at the beginning of each of these videos. If you haven't already, become a supporter of MVP. Make these videos possible. Patreon link down below. And if you're not a part of the Discord, join that for free as well. Both those links down below in the description. But Dave, as I'm going to say at the beginning of each of these what is your list? Who's number one through how many there are for combo guards in the 2023 draft? All right. So combo guards, very little explanation needed, thankfully, for this one out the gates. Uh, the, these are guards who can play the one or the two. Shockingly, mm -hmm. uh, ball in hands, ball out of hands. Uh, I would have confidence in them. Um, not typically the guys who I would see as a primary point guard at the next level. Not saying they can't do it, though. I'm not going to put it off limits, but they're versatile. It's a compliment, not not something to hold against. So my number one sh combo guard, I almost did to myself there. My number one combo guard is Kobe Bufkin out of Michigan. Love him. Uh, number two, might be a surprise for some, Nick Smith Jr. Number three, big surprise for a lot of people probably, Brandon Podzemski. Uh, number four... Continuing with the, the with the shockers, Marcus Sasser, and now people are gonna go like Dave, 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 Dave. You're you're with us right now, right? Like you're you're clearly you're clearly with us because you're just not mentioning names to to not mention names, or am I? Uh, maybe maybe not. Maybe I believe that they're on this board in the order I gave for a reason. Uh, next up would be Amari Bailey, followed by Keontae George, followed by Jalen Hood Shafana, who I really clearly dislike by how low he is on this big board. Uh, Adam Flagler, right behind him, who honestly, I like Adam Flagler a lot. I'm kind of, I'm just saying, he's on the way up. And then uh, the last spot on this list is Mike Miles Jr., um, someone who probably is getting underrated because of his size, but his production is undeniable. Um, so shout out, bottom of my list, but definitely draftable talent. Oh, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm trying to think again, just like we did for some of the other videos where I want to start here, because I, I'll ask you, do you want to start at the top or do you want to start in the middle? I'm good wherever, man. You so, just ask some questions. At me. Let, let's start with the first guy that you said, oh, this might be a surprise for most people. Um, yeah. Why would it be a surprise that you have pods at three? Because like, uh, I, I know both you and I like Brandon Pod, so maybe that's why I'm sitting there going like, is everyone not on the same page as us? Are they seeing something different? A lot of people hold on to the preseason rankings pretty mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. So people like Keontae George, people like mm -hmm. Jalen Hutchifano, who have been propped up all season. Um, Played on it's, Power 5 teams. Yeah, it, and even Amari Bailey to some extent. Like He came on as a late riser, but like... Mm -hmm. The names that we know and have known leading up to the draft cycle were on this list a lot higher. And Brandon is a second year player. So people mm -hmm. already don't, you know, want to give that value. And then on top of that, he went to Santa Clara, which a couple of years ago would have been like, I'm not buying it. Like, level of competition's not good. It's probably not going to translate. But Jalen Williams uh, came out and did a thing last year. I don't know if you saw what he did. Uh, oh, I okay, did. Caesar a saw. lot of people started betting on him later in the season because he was doing things, Dave. Yeah, it turns out. And then uh, each week you had to look and be like, wait, wait, wait. Did I put a bet? Okay, that's the right Jalen Williams. Jalen Williams. <laughs> hey, J. Will. You had to double check if the right one was starting. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, every game that Shea was out, it seemed like this man was magically worth, you know, what, 24, 7, and 7 a night? Like, he mm -hmm. was just, the sky's the limit with this kid. So, Santa Clara product, um, proven to the NBA that, yes, talent translates, period. The level of competition is, you know, something you can ask questions about, but the results clearly show for themselves. So, Brendan Pazemski is somebody who came from Illinois who got... Basically, no run 
with our local Illini team, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, made right. move, went to Santa Clara and became a star and had one of the most efficient seasons uh, as a shooter, had one of the best seasons as a rebounder for his, uh, I guess, position, technically, if you want to put him at you know the point, because uh, that's mostly what he ran at Santa Clara. I mean, just an insane effort guy, somebody who maybe doesn't have the same athleticism you would want, um, but he seems to be able to A, position himself well, and also B, just high effort, high work load kind of a guy i'm trying not to do the like coach mm-hmm. son gimmick right now so badly well i mean first in last out um you know I, real so lunch pail kind of kid the people if you're somebody sitting out he's there he's just a bucket well it's for me i have a different like when i yeah. say i have a different opinion about this uh this is a soft spot for me dave because i'm still not over him transferring yeah, I, I mean, was he was, very, he was like, Wisconsin kid too, right? Like, wasn't yeah, he, uh, he was Mr. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. He was like Mr. Yeah. Wisconsin coming out of uh, out of high school. Was yeah. going to come to the Illini, played for played for us for a year, showed flashes, and Illini fans were like, "Oh, cool! Like, w- like he's gonna like we're just gonna see him get better as a sophomore, and it, he's just gonna get better." And then our uh, at sometimes dumb head coach. Brad Underwood's kind of under the bus with a lot of Illini fans uh, was like, uh, the transfer portal is the only place I can get talent from. Uh, and Pods was like, all right, deuces, I'm out. And he went I to mean, Santa Clara and it's like, see the talent? The talent is there. Oh, but you, you guys brought in Sky Clark and that worked out great, right? Oh, yeah. It works out amazingly, Dave. He didn't leave us for nothing. He also played he, like dog. I know. Yeah. He had a Miller on top of playing like that's true. I forgot. Adam Miller also did that the year before. Yeah, like, Adam, we're just- Mil- Adam Miller did it because, you know, he can't play with Io. Like, why win and- a national championship with Io? Just leave. And um, who was who was your point guard that year that Io got pushed over to the two, who then sucked? You really liked him. You oh, really liked oh, him. Um, oh, he went to St. John's. Uh, why am I blanking on his name? He was like, he was the Javi Baez of college basketball. Oh, why am I blanking on his name? I can, Dave, I'm doing what you do. I can see his face in my head. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I love this kid. Oh. I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing up. Do you have it in front of you? I'm looking. It's not ho- looking. like. Oh, it was like. It was, wasn't it something mellow? No, it, it, oh, now I'm just going to look up Illinois St. John's. I've got to do it. I've got to, oh, who was it? I can't, I can't think of it. I can't think of it. This is going to bug, drive me crazy, Dave, that I can't think of this. Our whole show's on pause at this point. (laughs) Oh, and this thing getting mellow. Carbello. Carbello. That was I knew there was a bellow in Andre there. Carbello, yeah. Andre I Carbello. knew it. Yeah. I f-ing loved him too. Like Everybody leaves. Everybody leaves me. What's wrong with me? That's mm. the lesson for uh, Illinois fans, unfortunately. Yeah. Everybody um, hurts, especially you us. were saying Go this ahead. kid was basically built to be he was, yeah. we, we had hope. We yeah. we had like, hey, this guy's gonna take over for the team. Yeah. But no. If he would have st- I'll say this, if he still would have been in Illinois and did what he did in Santa Clara at Illinois, people would have him higher on their on their draft boards. He'd be he'd be Lotto. He'd yeah. be Lotto. Because he would have had a better he went to Santa Clara and people I, I hate to do the Brandon Swanson, but it's kind of true because Brand like the thing I loved about Brandon Swanson is Brandon is the typical sports watcher. How many people are watching Santa Clara basketball? About me, seven of them. me seven because of them. like I, I, I'll, uh, it'll be like a Friday night at like ten forty seven, Dave, and I'll be like, oh, there's college basketball. Oh, cool, Santa Clara. All right, I'll turn that on. Like yeah. what? I'm the I'm one of the only people that probably doesn't have a son on the team. Like not many people watched him, so that's why he's so low. I the dude, like you said, the dude's a bucket. Yeah, I think that uh, I think the fact that 
he came into the draft like scene so late mm-hmm. is just why people still haven't adjusted to like true his production should put him at this point mm-hmm. um because he really is one of the best shooters in the country um but also above him i have nick smith jr who yeah did not produce in college mm-hmm. i mean he's someone who struggled with injury after injury then why um, do you have pods of or pods below him because is I, it I, raw talent yeah, Nick Smith Jr. Yeah. in high school was insane. Mm-hmm. Nick Smith Jr. for flashes in college was incredible. And I think that that player's still in there. And I, I do think he just was wrong place, wrong time with mm-hmm. the Arkansas. That yeah. that was not how he was going to succeed because it felt like every time he stepped on the floor, he felt like he was trying to prove that he was still the guy. Mm-hmm. And it just threw off the entire team. And like they played away without him. And then they have to deal with like reintegrating him partway through the season and then having to do that all over again mm-hmm. later in the season. Like it just, it was a bad setup for him to show his talent, but you could still see he's incredibly talented. Mm-hmm. Um, so even with the very, very poor showing in college, um, I think Nick Smith jr. Is just a, a basketball stud. Well, because you brought up Nick Smith jr. I'll kind of bring in the, the other one that I was thinking about because most people have Smith jr over Buffkin out of Michigan. You're the opposite, Dave. Like I I look at big boards, they have Nick Smith Jr. and then below him, like right now, using Tankathon as the example. Shooting guard? What? Is Nick Smith Jr. usually like a a top combo guard off the board? Because I what I had seen from Mm -hmm. from the majority of people is always Deontay George, Jalen Hood Schifano, Nick Smith, and then Buffkin were all like very mm-hmm. interchangeable to a lot of people. So the fact that I had that gap there, I was like, oh, this is going to take people by surprise. But you're saying like, maybe well, not I mean, yet again, from there were some that I was looking at when I was doing my mock earlier. Right yeah. now, I only have tankathons in front of me, which we know tankathon like there's yeah, one guy. discrepancies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's got Nick Smith Jr. at 14. He's got Kobe Buffkin at 16. However, draft wise, he's got Nick Smith Jr one pick ahead of Buffkin. So really it's like, they're like this technically, well, I guess you could say. Here's, here's the thing. Kobe mm-hmm. Buffkin. Again, you, you want to talk about efficiency as a player. We talked mm-hmm. about with Podzemski. Kobe Buffkin did that, but at Michigan, like yeah. just, just a hair under, not, not as insane numbers, but also played a quite mm-hmm. a bit level competition. Um, and he's someone who got to shine because guess what? Injuries happen. So Michigan lost their starting guard. Um, Jet Howard started to take over more primary role than he had a tweak. Mm-hmm. So Kobe Buffkin really got to thrive because guys kept going down and his role kept expanding. And man, for a second year player, the jump he took is just mwah, fantastic. <laughs> um, you just you can't argue with the fact that he is good. And no, I'm sorry. He is insanely good at the rim. He is fishing. I think it was about 61 percent at the rim. Just some ungodly number like mm-hmm. he is he, for a guard. It's incredible how efficient he is. Um, he's a great, great offensive player, great defensive player. Um, does he doesn't have an entire bag, but he's adding more to it and he's getting more comfortable. And you saw it throughout the year, like the confidence was kind of growing and like the shots he would take and when he would set himself up for stuff. So he's comfortable on and off ball. Something you love to see. Uh, not the most like, Hey, I'm going to run the offense kind of, I, I need the ball in my hands, which is why mm-hmm. I like him because I think he, you know, he's, he's, he could run a second unit or you could put him in as a point guard, but you need maybe other ball handlers on the court at the same time as him who can also create. So like, I think he's in a really good position uh, to go as the number one combo in this class, just efficiency, two way player, Hella hustle. You saw growth out of him from year one to year two, mm-hmm. and he just kept getting better when the team needed him to. So everything I love about a player like Kobe Bufkin. There's also another discrepancy I see on your list. One like this is taking two things, putting them together into one question is you have a guy like Hood Schifano at what would that be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you've got a guy like Marcus Sasser Sasser. at four. Just putting it into perspective. Some mocks out there 
have those reverse where Hood Shifano is like a oh, mid teens yeah. pick where Saucer is a second rounder. Is this something where it's like you're seeing, hey, no way Sasser is going to go in the lottery, late lottery teens. But if this is my big board, yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. No, but I, but I'm saying like reiterating for the people out there making yeah. assumptions. Looking, I, at, I, I appreciate you clarifying. Looking at your board, I'm asking you: Is this basically you saying, "Hey, the team that takes Hood Chifano in the mid teens is going to be taking a? They're going to be overreaching." And the team that takes Sasser in the second is going to get in like Io Desumu type steal. A hundred percent. Yes, Ricky. Um, Sasser's a, an upperclassman. He's a just he was the leader of a fantastic Houston team. He anchored well their coached team Houston team. Well coached. A mm-hmm. lot of talent. A mm-hmm. lot of talent. There's no draft pick. Who's in the next? <laughs> you know, it's actually one or two down. A couple down from this one. Uh, he's going to he be drafted pretty highly. I'm pretty sure. Probably top mm-hmm. seven. Seven, if you if you if you can guess that one, um, he, look, he has just been a great defender. He's mm-hmm. improved his three point shot. He takes volume shots from three with confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, he he is a perfect bench guard for every team in the league, mm-hmm. and he could play like if you had to. You could put him in for the spot minutes you needed on like the Lakers. Like, you know how they were like, oh, no, D'Lo sucks again. It's the playoff time. <laughs> oh, no, we suck again. But you could just threes after every game. <laughs> you after every game. <laughs> Even after the last one. <laughs> yep. It's getting ready for next year, man. Love to see it. It's that dog mentality. <laughs> You could have put Marcus Sasser out there for the Lakers. <laughs> like, literally, Houston season ends. You could have just been mm-hmm. like, Marcus, go suit up at the Lakers, and he would have been better yeah. than D'Lo out there. Uh-huh. That's that, He just is already a built product. He is um, – the Patriots last year took um, upperclassman, point guard, bunch of uh, family. Matherin. Nope, nope, nope. nope. No, no. The third – at the end of the first, end of the first. Okay. I mean, they did take Matherin, but yeah, they, like you, you said Pacers. I was like, oh, I know this one. They took Matherin. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, point guard who uh, upperclassman. He's got a younger brother still in college, and he is a good point guard. Uh, they play him at like one through three because the Pacers do Pacer things, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. Rick Carlisle things with style, um, but he actually Nemhard Nemhard. Yeah, I just Fuck had yeah. it. It was actually first pick of the second round. Yes, and that is exactly what I expect. Like. That's mm-hmm. the range for Marcus Sasser. And again, Nemhard was a steal at 31, and so will Sasser. I mean, like, like let's people be... People want to talk about, like, oh, but we're drafting for upside. Jalen Hood Shifano stinks! Oh, brother, this guy stinks! He's not good <laughs> at basketball. I'm like, But he looks good, and I'm like, great. Do you want a player who looks good while but playing dude, basketball? Or do you want a player who's good at playing basketball? <laughs> well, he's not efficient shooting the ball. Well, that... Yeah, but like if you look at it from the scope of in these situations, sometimes he's pretty okay at it. No. How would you just look at the mm-hmm. games that they played and go, well, that guy looks like an NBA talent, and that guy looks like he could use a couple more years in college. But he's got this huge push because he got to play off ball from Trace Jackson Davis, which basically gave him the biggest rub of like, guess what? Defenses didn't lock into you. You weren't the number one focus. They had three guys mm-hmm. on TJT. And it's just... Everybody seems to fall in love with a guy who has no first step, very limited athleticism, you know, trying to break on that, like literally ball in hands, go downhill. Mm -hmm. It's just. I don't I don't see the thing everyone else has fallen in love with with him, because I think that he still needs more time in college. Could he be a good shooter? Yeah, his form doesn't look terrible, but Mm -hmm. it doesn't go in. It's. You know, we joked. I joked about it in a, in a couple of the cases, like guys who look like they should be basketball players, but they're not. Jordan Walsh, incredible defensive player, one through five defender. The shot should go in more than it does, but it doesn't. Mm-hmm. He looks like a basketball player. He just isn't ready to be a basketball player. That is Jalen Hood Shifano right now to me. Um, so I think value wise, he should be in the second round. I think he should go back to college genuinely, but obviously he's mm-hmm. he's going to get a paycheck. He's going to get first round pick. And a team is going to have to figure out how to best utilize. Uh, mm-hmm. He has good size to his to his credit. Like he's got a good base, but yeah. he is not a good defender. He's not a good offensive player. Mm-hmm. What am I? What am I? What so, am I seeing here? Where, when, where is the value? When it comes to 
sasser. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just, from the last two drafts at least, yep. I'm going to read out some names and you tell me what all these guys have in common. Herb Jones, Io DeSumo. Defense. Uh, Jalen Williams, Andrew Nemhard. What do all these guys have in common, Dave? They're winners. They're upperclassmen. And they were drafted in what round? Jalen Williams is the first. Unless I'm looking at the wrong Jalen Williams. Oh, you're, oh you're, you're talking J-A-Y-I-N. J-A-Y-I-N. Yeah, you're, ta- you're talking big, tall Jalen yeah. Williams. Got it. But like, Got it. Yeah. And, yeah, and I yeah. mean, let's be honest, although like he's not anywhere near no, like cool. Herb Jones, I would say maybe JRE also. Like that was a yeah, quality I pick. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't both, add him because like, but like yeah, yeah. Sasser could be like that to yeah. where like, especially like Herb Sanders. and Io, where it's like and you're Nemhard. getting a I'm quality sure and Nemhard. Put some fucking name. Put you're some respect getting out. a quality starter or could be a quality starter in the second. You're getting a baseline bench mm-hmm. point guard or yeah. bench you know, in the second. Role play in the second, and then he could be a starter. Like there's upside mm-hmm. for him still. Players don't magically stop growing at yeah. age 22. Yeah. Now, if it, that's people don't know that, but you can keep growing. You know, when you're 19 year olds, like think about, you know, he'll have seven years before his prime or six years before his prime. But then magically when you're 22, you're already over the hill and you're a finished product. Mm-hmm. You don't have three, four more years to go until your prime. Well, I mean, it's also well, like people value age in an interesting manner. That's all. I'm, they put an interesting value on it. Dave, you just you you reminded me of like people, mainly Bulls fans this year about Io, where it's like, oh well, bad season. He's a terrible player, terrible yeah. player. No one's no one's ever had a bad se- sophomore season and got better, right? Like, y- y- people continue to grow, people continue to get better, even if they have a bad season the year before. One name that you listed, so you listed off, and I can't remember if you were talking about his injuries or injuries around him. But the last thing we have down here is Amari Bailey. Yep. And I've written down Bailey injuries. So Bailey was someone who benefited from teammates getting injured. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it, you know, hey, it's a common story. I mentioned Buffkin got the same thing. Like mm-hmm. teammates go down. He has to step up. Next man with, up. Yeah. With Amari Bailey, um, Jalen Clark, mm-hmm. best defender, best guard defender in college basketball. Hard stop. Mm-hmm. That's him. His teammate goes down uh, and he was he was the anchor basically of that UCLA defense. A very, very good team, like mm-hmm. one of the top teams in the country, obviously. Um, he went down and Bailey's role kept growing. And at the end of the year, we saw some of the best games out of Amari Bailey. Um, fantastic showing in the tourney. And then even more so watch him play more as a primary point in uh, the G League, not G League, the um, the combine scrimmage, because mm-hmm. again, think about how that UCLA team works. And it's traditionally Jaime running the offense, running the pick and roll, running uh, all the actions. So it was kind of like a, a, a shared offense with Bailey. But the more that he got, the better he got. And I think that's something that you love to see guys who can grow into a larger role. Um, he's a good defender. He's a good offensive player. He's not like no number for him is like insanely off the charts, but everything is good enough that you're like, I think we're just starting to scratch the surface on who we think this guy is. And you you hear him talk in interviews about how him and Clark were close about how he pushed, you know, they pushed each other Mm -hmm. as far as like Bailey getting better on defense and how he needs to work harder and all this shit. Like it, it does matter. And you do see the, the growth in his game. So does he ball watch a little bit on defense? Yes, he's <laughs> he's he's done that a couple times. Would I wish he didn't? Sure. But he is still like by uh defensive box score, uh third? Tied, no, he's tied for second for combo guards uh defensively. Like he is the tied for second best defensive point guard or defensive combo guard, my rankings, mm-hmm. which is should tell you something. And again, part of that is he plays on an elite def- defensive squad, had Jalen Jaden Clark there for the majority of the season. So you get that benefit. But at the same time, you're playing around professional players like you had a Dembona, you had a, a Jaime and you have two guards who are very good. They had a good wing who I'm blanking on right now. Uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. They, they had a really good roster and it's a shame that they didn't win a ship, but there were better stories, you know? Yeah. Shot you. 
Well, this is where this video comes to an end. Let us know what you guys think down below about Dave's big board for his combo guards. About anything we talked about. Remember, if you want to support us, check out that Patreon link down below or become a channel member. And if you're not a member of the MVP Discord, join that down below as well. Also, go check out any of our other draft content and all our other uh, Dave's big boards. If you haven't checked those out, they're all on the channel. That's going to do it for us in this one. We'll see you in the next one. But as always... Have a good day, everybody. As always, we'd like to thank the people that make these videos possible, our patrons whose names are displayed on the screen now. If you would like to become a patron, go ahead and click the Patreon icon in the bottom right. And if you'd like to check out another video from MVP Sports, hit the video in the upper left. As always, thanks for watching.